Hey guys, a very warm welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining us once again. Got another great Sanchez video for you today, and it's going to be all about how to improve the efficiencies and your outputs of your factory. We've got five top tips for you today that you can incorporate really easily to start seeing those better results as you progress through the game. And we're going to do all this in our sandbox building. So without further ado, let's get straight in there and show you this first top tip. So tip number one is going to be all about splitting, guys. So once you get to level 15, you unlock the fast splitter, which allows you to shove more items through your factories at the same time. So we're using an example here where we're splitting the lines down twice, and you might think to keep the production at its most optimum that you need to employ all these splitters here. As we turn this on, we get a factory output of 20 iron per second here, but these splitters are expensive. They cost a lot of money. They start to add up very quickly. So our number one top tip to save yourself some money is split it off with a fast splitter first of all and then just use two regular splitters here followed by your designs and as you will see the production rate does not slip we're producing just as much and we're saving ourselves a lot of money on those fast tech 3500 plus all the complicated materials for your fast splitter here uh, if we look at the normal splitter 350 and basic materials so it makes a big difference in your overall costs to produce this factory and it changes no output at all. Top tip number two is going to be all about when you heat before you split the supply. If we go down this route here, place a synthesizer, place a heater, followed by a splitter and two exporters here. If we turn this on, we can see we're outputting 9.52 iron per second here. However, that is not as efficient as splitting these lines before you decide to heat them. Put two heaters down instead and we can see that production rate jumps up to 10. There's no loss of product there, and these small margins can make a big difference over the course of a whole factory, so make sure if you're splitting your products, you heat them up after you split them down rather than before. Top tip number three is gonna be all about the grabbers. So if we build this first example here, we're gonna use grabbers on either side of this synthesizer going straight into our exporters. We can see we're producing five iron ore per second with this method. However, if you're wanting to get the most efficient output from your synthesizer, we're gonna use two long grabbers instead of a single grabber here. And we can see the production jump up marginally to 5.46. Again, these are all small gains, guys. But if you add them all together over the course of your factory build, these small gains can add up all together and make some big differences to your overall outputs. So top tip number three is to always use two long grabbers instead of one grabber where possible, and that will increase your output overall. Top tip number four doesn't necessarily increase the output of your factory, but it can help you get out of some sticky situations. Not too many people are aware of this, but you can take items directly from your devices into the next stage of your factory. For example, if we turn this on, we can see the products being taken directly from this device. And if you are really short on space on your factory designs, as we said, this can help you get out of a tricky situation. So you don't always have to put more belt down after the product is made within the device. You can take them directly out and move them on to the next element. That might just make the difference of being able to produce the item you want rather than rearranging the whole factory. Now top tip number five is all about bottlenecks in your factory designs. Now these aren't always easy to spot. We're using a simple example here to explain the process so you can keep an eye out in your factories. The idea being if you've got a bottleneck within one part of your factory, it's gonna affect the overall output of your products once your factory is finished. As you can see, we've got a circuit board set up here. We've turned this factory on and we can quite clearly see we're producing plentiful amount of iron plates, but the copper wire is struggling. We've got no backlog on there, so our electronic assemblers are not working at their utmost capacity, and that's causing a drop in output. So if we turn this factory off, add another line of copper wires onto our factory here, turn this back on, we can see that the circuit board output has jumped up to 0.91, and we should start to see a backlog of our copper wires building up in our factory ever so slowly. This means our electronic assemblers are now working at capacity and we've got rid of the bottleneck in our factory. 
So if you've got a bottleneck, keep an eye out for it in your factory and add some more supply lines to that item and you should be able to increase your output much higher once you've figured out where the deficit is. We hope these five top tips have helped you out guys. These are definitely the rules we live by when we are designing our new factories. If you keep all these in mind, you should start to see bigger outputs for everything you want to make. We'll be back next time with another video, but thanks for watching as always, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.